feature site here with Brent from River Valley Alliance. Is the North Saskatchewan River Valley really North America's largest stretch of urban parkland and why? This River Valley Park System is in fact the largest urban park in North America. What's difficult for people to comprehend is the size and scope relative to its length. If you compare it to a Central Park or a Stanley Park in Vancouver, they're square and you can get a sense of the size. With our River Valley Park System, we go from the far southwest of Devon, which is a municipality, to the far northeast of Sturgeon County, and it all encompasses about 100 kilometers. So it is the largest urban parkland in North America. So if we do a comparison, we are about 18,000 acres and Central Park would be about a thousand acres. So we're about 18 times larger than Central Park in New York City. There's an interesting history component to this. Uh, you mentioned about how this got started. Uh, the concept of a preserved River Valley Park was first conceived in 1907 by a landscape architect, Frederick Gage Todd, so what happened after that, like the flood of 1915? Right. So Frederick Todd was invited to come to Edmonton. He was a landscape architect. And he talked to the city at that time about preserving green space that all future great cities will have is green space. So at the time, this river valley was quite industrialized. There was coal mines, brickyards, lumber mills. And when the flood of 1915 hit, it was so devastating that it washed all of the industry out of the river valley. So from that point on, the city fathers of the day said, let's preserve this parkland for natural forest and treasure of our beauty rather than industrializing. So hence we have the pristine river valley we have today. A train sitting on the bridge so that the river would not wash it away. That there, was quite amazing. There is a, a bridge in Edmonton called the Low Level Bridge. Uh, back in those days, it was a rail bridge. And so because of the fear of the bridge being washed away from the size of that flood, they parked a train filled with coal cars on top so that the weight would hold the bridge in place. That's and amazing. the water level literally came up to the bottom of the bridge. Wow. Low level bridge in Edmonton. This is the bridge I referred to in the 1915 flood where they parked a coal train on top of it to prevent it from being washed away. You can see the distance between the water level and the bridge deck, and during the flood, the water was literally at the bottom of the bridge. So what has Edmonton done to revitalize the River Valley? Before you could not swim in it, say in the 1970s, and today you can. There's a couple of things. You know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, the technology and the, the quality of the water was a little bit less than it is today. Um, remember that this is a silt river, so there's lots of things that float down the river. And through testing, through technology, the water quality today is so much better than it was. So part of our goal is to break the myth of this misunderstanding that it's a toxic and dirty river. Because it's brown, it's a silt river, but that does not translate into toxic or dirty or unhealthy. In fact, there are groups of people who do swim in the river valley in the river every single day. But it's partly due to water conservation efforts, the technology opportunities, the upgrading of the water treatment systems, all of those contributed to a much cleaner river we have today. Thanks, Brent. And we're going to talk to you in the next episode about what features make this such a fantastic river valley system and one of the greatest in North America.